Welcome everyone. I'm here with Gemini Brett and we would like to speak about iAstrology. It's coming up October 2018 in Tucson, Arizona. Two parts. Part one is October 4th to 7 and part two is October 7 to 11. Now, what is iAstrology? At OPA, we came to the understanding that many people who would like to become astrologers give up. They don't have the support. They don't have a support system. And they end up trying, realizing they can't sustain themselves financially. They're not very good with marketing. And yet today, more than ever, we're at a time where with the help of the internet with the greater and stronger community it's more than ever possible to realize our dream and our true vocation to become astrologers full-time astrologers part-time astrologers so this is a very important event it's our second time and we're going to take it to the next level and i'm very excited that Gemini Brett is going to be on our faculty. Gemini has really uh, brought something very unique to the world of astrology because many astrologers can interpret the symbols pretty well, but they can't always correlate it to the actual heavens. And we at OPA have now included astronomy as part of our certification process. So we want to introduce people into astronomy in a way that is not intimidating, that's not overwhelming, that doesn't require crazy math. It's astronomy for astrologers. So Gemini will be with us for three days, inspiring people, opening our minds, our hearts, our connection to the earth through the sky. Yeah, our hearts, that's an important part of the work. I watched Maurice um, give a lecture here in Seattle a couple of nights ago about Mars and Mars retrograde in Aquarius. And, um, and I was very happy that Maurice started with a, a good amount of astronomy, really, and laid it out very clearly. And it opened the window to then convey the correspondences, the astrological information. And people were really speaking about it after. You know, and outside, people were like, oh, what's with the retrograde? And I do these things where it's like, okay, you'll be Earth and I'll be Mars and we stand here and here's the signs and walk this way and pass me by and see what's happening. And um, I think it's important, usually when we convey this astronomical information, it can just get so science class and so nerdy and it's hard to convey the information with static images and words. I'm making all of these animations right now and moving pictures of Earth about the sun and Earth spinning and the stars moving in the sky and I'll be able to bring those animations as part of the classroom work. But a lot of the classroom work, at least for my portion, and I hope this is cool, it's going to be outside, even during the day. We'll have to sign everyone uh, <laughs> sign you know, disclaimers. liability and disclaimers. I've had that. I've had that at <laughs> astrology groups, and it's, okay, let's just go outside, and we're going to work with our shadow like a sundial and see how the primary motion works, for example. It's like, well, we don't go outside. And, you know, we do these conferences, and the logistics of a large conference I mean, demand that we meet in these super hotels and cities and... But the retreat format where we can be out in nature and in Arizona where the sky is open and during early October, during I Astrology, we're going to see every visible planet. It's a new moon time. It's a dark sky time. What we'll be doing in the intensive, it, it won't be all in the classroom and, you know, all mind and looking at screen. We'll be outside. I have these different embodiment practices where we're actually moving and we're playing the parts of planets and, and we're doing shadow work and we'll build a medicine wheel to see the directions and then connect that to the angle. So, and then a lot of night sky work, which I'm just so excited to bring people Basically, into. Basically, you won't sleep. 
and that's the great fun. Now, why is that important? Most astrologers don't even know that the constellations are not 30 degrees equal in the sky. They don't always understand the difference between a sign and the constellation. They don't understand why this whole thing about the 13th sign is about. Mm -hmm. Most astrologers look at the chart and today, for example, Jupiter is at 15 Scorpio. But if you actually look at the heavens, it's at... Zubanel Janubi. Zubanel Janubi. Yeah. Fulcrum of the scales. I can't encourage enough um, a direct sky practice. Just we, we spend so much time with the webinars and the books. And just to have that time where you go sit outside and open up to the wonder of the sky where so many of us began. And it gives us time to integrate. So I'll show you ways where you can take this as a practice, as a yoga, as a ritual, as a ceremony, and open up a direct communication to the stars that will help inform what we're learning in the classroom and bring it into a more personal experience. And from an OPA perspective, what we're interested in is educate astrologers about these basic concepts so they can better understand the chart but they can also be better agents of astrology. And, you know, we're bringing some of the best people. I think Gemini Brett is really uh, very dedicated, very well-educated and natural. And all our faculty, you know, each one is really a specialist in what they do. So I'm going to just talk about another aspect of the conference, and that's going to be in part one where we are going to encourage people and, and provide them ways with uh, easy marketing. How to create a video, you know, it cheaply and effectively. Something like this that can promote your work. How to uh, make an, an amazing first impression if you want to do public speaking. Um, how to build a website that is going to be effective, that's going to be affordable and yet really bring clients and not push them away. All these little conversations and tips with astrologers who are also producers, who are also uh, web designers and, and bring that critical thinking with easy techniques so that like we said, we have today accessible tools, affordable tools, like never before, to succeed and make it as professionals. Now, OPA is really dedicated to that and is offering scholarships. This means that if we identify astrologers who are really dedicated, who really want to make it, and we see that they are good, uh, they just need that encouragement, they just need help. We're going to provide a $2,500 scholarship, that's one of them, and we are going to help um, place promising astrologers in public speaking slots in some of the most popular conferences, such as SOTA in New York, New York State, possibly the NCJR conference uh, next year in Baltimore and a conference in the UK the Astrology Association conference in the UK the astrology conference in India so there you have an opportunity to break into the circuit of um, of conferences and and present if that's something you feel inclined to do and I want to share with you some of the things that the judges will look for when people will present their work. So you can either present an article that you wrote, you can present your website, you can present a 15 minute public speaking presentation, um, or anything that you feel is showcasing your work and showing that you mean business and that you know what you're talking about. So Roy Gillett, who is the president of the Britain Astrology Association, 
uh, just wrote a, you know, a quick line about what as panelists, as judges, who will determine who's going to get the scholarship, what are they going to look for? Clear content, immediate, informed and informative and inspiring content, creating the feeling of either I never knew that before or how amazing it is mm. and I know that already but I admire the way it is presented having an arresting impact from the beginning not boring sustaining interest visual commentary and background music need to be need to complement each other uh, well-structured website easy to understand items not overly wordy or over flashy do, does do the job intended to make the viewer want to respond as the creator wished. So Russell Olhausen, who is going to be also one of the panelists, one of the faculty, is saying passion. I need to see passion and drive in the astrologers. I need to see that they really will devote themselves to this practice. Alex Zolotov wrote about authenticity. Another thing I think Brett shares with me and, and, and Opa is, is the need to take today astrology more seriously. Yeah. <clears throat> you know, it's not just a hobby. It's not just a retirement plan. And it's fine if people want to retire and do astrology, but it's great to see people like you who who manage to transition from their profession into a full-time practice. Well, I'll tell you, I had a part-time job when I came into astrology and that helped me pay the mortgage. And it was months after I joined OPA, actually. And the constant um, encouragement I'm hearing about, you can do this, this can be your soul living, where I said, yeah, I can. And as soon as I quit that job, it's really opened up for me, it's, it's been great which basically is part of branding. We have to be careful when we want to do things in a way that's affordable, not to make it cheap. Mm. You know, it's a difference between affordable and low quality versus affordable and classy. So you want it to be sexy, you want it to be attractive, and you want it to be smart. Mm. So you'll get so many tips and you'll realize that it's possible, that it's not overwhelming. Why can't this be your career and a successful career? So it's Uranus, the sky, in Taurus, mm. the earth. It is time to make it sustainable, practical, <laughs> and to bring abundance to our field. Now, there's one thing that I'd like to add as you're maybe sitting on the fence is to understand that the world needs more astrologers. You know, this is a service that is so invaluable. We are transforming people's lives. We are providing a perspective that no other modality can provide. So we need not just astrologers, but good ones. And not only good ones, but ones who can be accessible, visible, and who can be successful in what they do. So. Tucson is calling you and really sit with it hear the calling not just of this conference it's not just about participating in another event it is about responding to maybe a higher calling and to offer your service the best way you can thank you everyone and if you want more information if you want to sign up go to the OPA website opaastrology.org